How are you? Fine. I just posted the agenda. I'm going to try to not cut my chin off as I as I frequently do. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So um, I'm starting a little late, so might as well get started a little bit. Um, Okay, so first piece of news, unfortunately, um, I heard from Balash um, this morning, or yesterday, I think probably, this morning, um, not due to scientific issues, but due to pragmatic issues of um, not being able to move the leads. Um, Balash is not going to be able to work with, um, with Neta Cohen, um, which I think means that um, he's going to have trouble working with C. elegans in general. And uh, his current plan is to work with uh, his advisor in Edinburgh, um, uh, who and and probably work on something more like Drosophila. Um, so he's you know he seemed disappointed in his email that he sent to me. Uh, they wouldn't be able to do it. He he does still want to contribute a a paper uh, to the direction of sort of this idea of a Turing test for for the open worm and uh, would like to see any overlaps um, that he can possibly do with the project, but um, uh, says he doesn't, doesn't think that he'll be doing experiments um, on C. elegans right now. So that's unfortunate, but we do wish him well on, on that other direction and uh, understanding, of course, that it's always challenging to, to get your graduate program project picked, uh, you know, and um, you got to do what you got to do. So totally understand that part. Um, so that's first news. Uh, next point here, uh, there is a, so sort of we thought we would have to submit the first abstract immediately upon following the um, um, the last meeting, and then that got extended, and then we we wrote up an outline, and I think a lot of you guys got a chance to see the outline, but the actual prose did not actually come until until uh, late last night when I remembered that the global end of May 1st was impending. So I wrote up some prose that basically based on the bullet points and then I copied the then I copied that prose into the form on the site and then it, it promptly told me that I had about tw the double the number of characters that I was actually allowed to have. So then I started cutting down um, the characters and um, anyway so what you see there is sort of the compacted version of, of kind of what we wanted to say. Um, Tim, I made you the first author of this one. Um, I, I had the following rationale for the author order. Um, I, wanted, I wanted Tim, Porig, and Sergey to be uh, the first authors, um, but I arranged you guys in alphabetical order by last name. So Tim, you came up first. Um, and um, so Sergey, the three, so you three are in in alphabetical order, and then um, all other contributors in the project are in alphabetical order after that, except for me at the end, just because I'm the coordinator. So um, so that's uh, that's how it worked out. Uh, Tim, you're not obligated to um, to fly yourself to Munich, uh, but uh, I thought that anyway, um, since you are, were kind of the one leading off this. This whole charge of collecting the database together, I think, I think it was appropriate anyway, too. So, um, so that that was submitted last night. Hey, Mike. Thank you. Hey there. Sure. Um, so just uh, you can check out the apps link uh, to the agenda. Um, I uh, we I submitted this uh, abstract to uh, to the meeting, uh, the the NeuroML, sorry, the INCF meeting um, on the on the NeuroML uh, C. Elegans Connect Dome. So, uh, is it 
What's that? Did it submit it as a poster? Yeah, as a poster. Yeah, not as a not as a demo. So, anyway, um, so hopefully that'll get accepted. I think that the acceptance rate at this meeting is usually pretty good. Um, okay, then um, another piece of news from last week. Um, so, uh, Alex and Mike and I met to discuss the um, the state of the muscle cell data, and we walked through the um, the presentation which I've linked here in the agenda. Um, hi, Andre, by the way. Um, hi, Stephen. Um, so, um, so I think that was useful. I think we got a better understanding of what of what that data are. Um, I was um, I was hopeful that by now we would we would have gotten another response from the graduate student that we got put in touch with, um, who actually has some of these data sets uh, in a high time resolution high time resolution way. Um, we haven't heard from them yet, but uh, we are really hopeful that we're going to get a response back soon. And since we are broadcasting on the internet, maybe maybe somebody will will tap these this group on the shoulder and say, "Hey, it'd really be awesome if you contributed." Um, so, um, but anyway, we're hoping that 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 that, that, that comes soon. Again, if this is a very slow process. Obviously, when we don't have uh, direct connection um, or sit directly at um, at the uh, lab where they have that stuff. So I don't know. We may still have to consider transcribing these figures um, if, if they don't get back to us you know, soon. But I'm still holding out hope. So I think Mike and Alex, I think I'm, well, Alex isn't here. But Mike, I think I'll start CCing you guys on these emails so that you aren't just kind of like, well, what's going on with that? It's a good idea. Um, so I'm going to continue to ping that. Up. OK. And. Um, and then, uh, you know, planning for release three is uh, the next thing. I'm still sort of skipping over this Agile thing because um, this is a compressed, uh, a compressed time. But I basically, I, I copied into the agenda here um, the notes that we've been taking for the last two meetings about uh, sort of the next directions. And, um, and uh, I guess I kind of wanted to open it back up again um, to see if we had kind of um, if we were kind of on the same page for, for what to do next. Um, and I think there are these different areas now that are starting to kind of come out here. But um, I think in my mind, I still have questions about the difference between pursuing the highly detailed model versus the simplified model and what, ex what actions we want to take um, to um, to proceed either in parallel or um, in series with those. Um, the other piece as well that um, came up at the end of the last meeting on the muscle cell data, which actually Andre jumped on as well, which is very useful, is that Mike uh, reminded us that um, the whole point of the SPH is that um, we are injecting forces into the muscle cell that are based on the conductance of the membrane of the muscle cell wall. And that, um, and that we need a way to describe those forces um, and how they are you know, modulating the, um, the wall of the, of the muscle cell. So I sent, I think you guys, I think you guys got, did I send a movie to you guys, Mike and Andre and Sergey? Sergey, let's see. No, I don't think Sergey was in the call, but Alex probably. So there, I, there's a movie of the muscle cell, and it's got a little, um, pipe uh, electrode in it, and they stimulate it, and it moves. So you can kind of see how it changes shape. And if we can replicate that with SPH, um, apply forces in a reasonable way in that same way, then we'd be in good shape. But I think we need to understand from a planning perspective how far away it would be for us to actually, you know, create a muscle cell like that, um, and then what it would take to inject um, what we know about the dynamics. Um, you know, Hodgkin Huxley spikes or whatever um, into the creation of that of those force fields. So, okay, so I'm going to stop talking and open it up a little bit. But basic topics I think that is coming down to are simplified versus um, accurate. Where, who, and I guess part of that question is who who wants to <laughs> to work on each because you know we probably need to get this starting to be specific based on like what people are interested in. 
simplified versus accurate, um, muscle cell forces with dynamics, um, sort of what's the short term integration there. And then um, the synapses project, Steve Cook um, at the last minute couldn't come to this meeting, but we're going to continue to work on that. Um, um, you know, uh, the next steps to integrate the data. Then maybe we can start with those three as a straw man and um, expand outward from there. So does anyone want to talk about the simplified versus accurate question right now? Um, I've, I've got some thoughts on this. Yeah. So <coughs> I was kind of under the assumption that this would just happen anyway. I mean, we would start with a simple model and add complexity to it. So I'm not even sure what it means when we say a simplified versus an accurate model. I mean so let me see if I can yeah, let me see if I can clarify that a little bit more. So in some sense we have started with a simplified model. Um, and in that starting with is the Cyber Elegance work that preceded the beginning of this project, but you know, of which the team members of that project are now on on here. So from their perspective, I think and Andre and Sergey, correct me if I'm wrong, I think their perspective is that they built they built a simplified model in C++ um, that, uh, you know, was, I think, a tour de force closing the loop in 3D. Now they want to flesh, they're interested in fleshing it out, adding more biological detail so that it can potentially generate more hypotheses. Um, and that's what we've been doing for the last year or so is, is building out kind of that second version that would really have a lot more, that would be able to cope with more complexity. But in doing that, um, the path has been, uh, you know, a long road. There's been some intermediate milestones that have, you know, I think have been, have been really good. But getting back to a fully functional model along that second path, you know, is one where we're sort of looking at it and we're like, oh, this is a long road. And so the idea of getting back to simplified is essentially, I don't know, pick up cyber elegans or to, you know, make a new simplified, you know, model from what we have now and that we can make short-term progress on that uh, continues to motivate us and continues to also be a rallying point for, you know, others people to contribute, something that people can look at and focus on and say, ah, okay, I can see that, you know, I can see your simulation is, is making progress. So it's kind of a, a large landscape of to what extent do folks want to pick up, you know, Cyber Elegans and run with it some more? Uh, to what extent do we want to maybe consider some of the 2D models that are out there? That would be another way to do it. Uh, to what extent do we want to have simplified neurons um, rather than biological neurons in the next version? Um, while at the same time not losing track of the fact that we, are, we want to continue consolidating the real data that exists of, of C. elegans into the neuromel model and the descriptions which are kind of more biophysically accurate. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I guess my concern with that would be just t perhaps too much division of our <coughs> labor force. Yeah. Um, I mean, it really, the, the labor force here um, in, the, in the open source project, of course, comes down to really what it is that yeah, the individuals feel good about doing. So, so, I mean, this simplified thing is something that I've heard, you know, desire for amongst us. So I'm I'm just giving voice to that. Um, seems like some people are interested in in working on that part. So um, even if it divides the force, you know, to some extent, we, you know, that might not be a great thing. But at the same time, we're not in a position to dictate what people do. So um, we're only in a position to kind of suggest that doing X would, you know, would might add that we might be able to add things together better if people did X. But um, but I still feel very strongly that, uh, oh no, we've lost Andre. Um, I still feel very strongly that, um, that this thing has to be driven by people's passions and interests. So um, that's, that's going to be the first thing. So maybe somebody who's in favor of Simplified um, wants to sort of suggest a path uh, that, we could, that we could take here. Um, but can I can I can I say something? Absolutely. Yeah. So when we when we talk about simplified, are we talking about the? I mean, really, are we talking about the complexity down to the muscle cell, um, which is really, in my mind, not very simple at all? No, uh, I think the muscle cell stuff is actually on the side of accurate. I think that's the path that we've been. Yeah, personally, I mean, 
if I were to, yeah, so it might be useful for, for me to divide this stuff up. Um, ooh. By the way, the Hangout now actually tells us how many outside viewers we have. We have three. Oh, cool. um, it's up in the upper corner, although now we have two. Uh, it keeps changing. I have, well, maybe you don't see it, but I have it in the upper right corner um, underneath, like, the microphone button. Um, I don't Do you see, see it. it. No? no? I see it either. Okay, maybe it's only on my end then, because um, I'm the broadcaster. But, yeah, it says... It says two viewers. Okay, right. So let me just see if I can characterize this because I think it's important. So I'm typing on the agenda, by the way, in case in case you didn't, didn't know. So simplified would be um, full body uh, C. elegans model um, with behavior um, 3D or 2D, you know, maybe um, along the lines of cyber. Uh, Elegance, reusing cyber elegance code potentially, um, and, and evolving that um, code base um, from where it is is today, rather than starting fresh. So those are some of the characteristics. Whereas accurate is all about um, building out the modular simulation engine. Um, I think a lot of the, personally, I think that the, the model optimization really falls under accurate um, myself. I think that the muscle cell dynamics with neurons fall under here. Um, and uh, I think that the SPH physics uh, maybe also falls under here. But I don't think the simplified is necessarily not modular. So okay. I, 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 that's not the idea I had of simplified either. Okay. All right. Good. Well, so let help me help me flesh this out then, guys. Um, well, I, I, I'm just uh, just trying to put something on paper. What I'm personally uh, thinking whenever I say simplified worm, it's not simplified in terms of its software architecture. Okay. It is not simplified in terms of visualization. Uh, hey, sorry, Mike. Mike, uh, we're getting that feedback from you. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take the liberty to hit the mute button on you um, when when I hear that feedback um, if you're not talking. So just, just feel free to unmute yourself um, when you wanna, when you wanna talk. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Matteo. Uh, so whenever I'm saying simplified, I'm not thinking of uh, simplified in terms of architecture. I'm not thinking in terms of Simplified in terms of uh, front end, uh, so visualization wise, I don't think uh, there would be any difference. Theoretically, I'm thinking about simplified model, and uh, as consequence, a simplified uh, solver. Let's say because if model that we're trying to simulate uh, in the accurate simulation is, for instance, neuromel and uh, and in that case, we might be going down the road of writing a neuronal solver which works with arbitrary ion channels, code generation, whatever, while we could have uh, some simplifying neurons as the cyber elegance has in the simplified version. So I'm thinking about simpler model which would bring as consequence simpler solvers, but I'm not thinking of putting these into any different context than the simulation engine that we are already building. Because okay. why, why would a simpler model imply a simpler solver? Well, uh, as a, a, a logic threshold unit is simpler than an Atkin Oxley. So that's what it means by that. So the implementation of the solver is simpler, but the architecture is the same. That's that's what we mean by it's that. It's a different class of model that you could and potentially not, work with. Not necessarily simple. Is that less complex as a model, less detailed? If that few and fewer parameters. That's the other. That's the other piece of it. Yeah. Right? So it could be something that is not as detailed. So instead of actually actually use something that needs less parameters, or you use something like integrated and fire or a logic threshold unit. Something that is less complex. It's another solver, and it's a, this is the integrated fire uh, solver instead of 
how you can actually solve it. But the architecture stays the same. Uh, okay. So the modularity doesn't come into the divide. It's, I mean, the architecture will be the same. Uh, so if that answers the question. Yeah. And I, I apologize, by the way, for it, it getting the vision of what simplified means wrong um, for this. I, I think that it's important that we're all on the same page. So I, th I think it, it's worth repeating. But so I would ask you this, you know, Mateo. So if simplified doesn't mean that we get to seeing a wiggling worm faster, is it truly simplified? Why uh, doesn't it mean that? It means, uh, basically, you could even, uh, if you push to extreme, to an extreme, what I said, because I was saying that, as a general rule, you have a different model, so something that is simpler to simulate, okay? And uh, basically, uh, first of all, w what would the goal be of such a simplified version? And the goal would be to basically test uh, much earlier all the commonalities that we would be having with the accurate simulation. So say, for instance, we're testing the front end. We're testing a streaming of data that comes from the simulation that happens in the back end uh, to whatever client we have. Uh, and all of these uh, components would be exactly the same as what we will have in the accurate. But we basically would have much earlier, and I will tell you in a second why I think this is the case, uh, we would have much earlier a crawling worm that we can showcase in the same way that we have been showcasing the worm browser right now. So it is a product much earlier. It's not the same product because it's not uh, biologically accurate yet, but from the outside it might even look uh, very similar. So, and the answer to why would it take less time to develop such simplified worlds? Well, if you think, if you push it to an extreme, for instance, in the accurate version, you have a physical model uh, which runs independently, which is independently from the neural model, and then every now and then you go and integrate, uh, and uh, the current at some stage eventually will influence the, the physical model. There will be a force and blah, blah, blah. In here, you could have even just one model which comes basically integrated by default in between the two. It could be something like the cyber elegance uh, where you just play with some parameters that you can define arbitrarily and that will lead to a, basically a simplified network uh, which makes the worm from the outside behave similarly, but let's say just sinusoidal motion, whatever. And such simplified model could give you that uh, regardless of how it is happening. So it is uh, not biologically accurate, but basically you're testing uh, and you're developing the entire infrastructure. Because it's like going in a biologically accurate way before, for instance, having the worm crawling. We might be down the road like five years from that. So okay. So yeah. another. Another view on another view on um, what simplified means. And sorry, I'll just I just but I just want to throw this out there because I do want to engage Andre. So another view on what simplified means that was brought up before was that um, SPH could be integrated into the current Cyber Elegance code, um, and uh, and that would then be released that could then be released to the public sooner rather than later, and that we you know you'd evolve that that code base. Um, so that's so I I do want to. I, I do want us to kind of confront that as a, you know, that as an option, um, and decide what we want to do with it. Um, so, something I have that I support the simplified version is, um, you know, I, I was saying something uh, to you earlier last week about uh, I created a, a recursive um, web service quite a long time ago, and I modified it for C Elegant and put the entire connect home into an SQL database and ran it, stimulating the order sensory neurons. And to my nice surprise, I got this huge table of motor activity. And now I had no way to represent that in, 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 um, in, in a visual format, but I went back to look at Cyber Elegance um, and thought, well, that'd be pretty cool. I think, I think there's enough there where if, we could take, if I could take that table Read the mo muscle stimulation, 
and then see what happens as a result, then then we could validate the connectome. So the point is, in a, in, a, in a simplified version, we could create even from a sensory neuron a very a very simple. I mean, it, what, what was really cool about this is that um, using the sensory neurons, I was able to to create a lot of muscle activity. Uh, and so, so, so that would support the simplified version to start off. With. That's an interesting perspective too. Andre, do you want to do you want to weigh in here on this? Because I think I think there are several perspectives here, and we do want to try to reach some consensus. Um, also, Sergey, do you guys have any viewpoints here? Um, Stephen, you mean uh, our understanding of. Um, complexity or simplicity of the system or um, the decision about is it necessary to use a simplified version before or faster uh, getting results or um, to focus on making yeah I, I think the question from the very beginning yeah I think the question well, of, of course uh, uh, sorry. oh sorry I, I thought you were asking me yeah I, I think mainly you know what what you what you think uh, you want to be working on basically for the next six months for your own you know research direction because we to some extent have to follow you know what what you desire to do so um, I'm just curious of these two choices how you see them and which which of these two options you're you're most interested and excited about um, you know working on. Okay, um, I see that. Um in summer, mm, I have uh, much more uh, free time to work on our um, open world uh, tasks than in the winter, where um, a lot of other work in the institute exists. So I, I really feel now that mm, I have mm, a good amount of time to spend it to cyber religion or um, to open world. I'm very glad that. Happens, um, and um, work on open space speech uh, goes well. So I'm expecting to get it working. Well, maybe uh, one or two weeks uh, will be something, something uh, to look at. I feel that um, this physics um, is a time limiting factor which doesn't allow to move uh, further for other parts of the project uh, at least somehow. So um, now I um, put all existing time in making this work and uh, Sergey also focused on helping me in this um, field. So I think that at least we can focus on making all is necessary mm, to make uh, the complex uh, model at once. Now we have chances to do it. That's right. You're still on the. So I think I think what I'm understanding from that is you are still on the on the path of the larger system. Um, because you've be, you've already been to the simplified you've you've done the simplified system and you're eager to move beyond it is that um, would you agree with that? Yes, I do. Okay. Hey. Could I um, put some, give some input here? So, um, from my perspective, what I'd really like to be working on is now. Um, so I've made a simple muscle cell which I'm now in the process of optimizing towards the data um, and if I, I've put that on Google on the on the github repository made a github repository just now so it's um, okay. can you link that can you link that uh, yeah website? unfortunately it requires a library which I haven't made public so it's not going to be particularly useful to anyone unless you um, oh. unless so, you but <laughs> unless you're Mike Vella but um, I will I will do that I'm just uh, I just thought it would be better to to put that online right away. But, uh, yeah, it's just there. It's just in the. If you just go to the GitHub repository, it's, it's the, the, lo the last thing I added because I added it like an hour ago. Um, it's just some helper functions. It's nothing major. If you want to mess with the code, you get it to work. Or if you just ask me for the library, I'll, anyway, I'll put that online in a minute. But anyway, what I was going to say is, what I um, what I'm interested on working on is um, 
as I understand it, Andre is working on adding SPH to the more to the more complex model. And what I'm really interested in is getting this muscle cell model to talk to the to talk to the SPH. So um, just using neuron as the solver for the for the dynamics of the muscle cell and getting getting the physics to, to talk to the to talk to the to talk to the muscle cell um, electrophysiology. That that's what I would really like to do. And if um, <coughs> I'd like to have a meeting with Andre about this to see how how we could how we could do that, how we could um, how we could incorporate incorporate the yeah the ele electrophysiology of the muscle cell with the with its motion. That's what that's what I'd really like to work on. Yeah, so that's interesting. So that's interesting thing that sort of suggests like building an SPH binary maybe that can that in inputs can go into and um, you know uh, represents the muscle cell um, and then uh, can be in a loop with um, with um, you know the system that you've been optimizing there. Um, what uh, what simulator are you using, Mike? Um, Neuron. Okay, so you are using neuron. Okay, great. Yep. Um, so this is kind of the question, I think, though, and I know, and I know this probably. I don't know. I'm sort of looking over it at, at, at Matteo, and I and I see him virtually shaking his head potentially. The challenge, of course, that the part that makes the software engineer of this of this cringe is that um, you know we're not doing this in in the context of um of a larger architecture if we're doing these point to point things. At the same time. You know, um, it, it, this sort of thing does get driven by what people's interests are, and we may have to go through the path of um, some of these point-to-point -point connections in the absence of you know the architecture that's there to, to support it. But um, let me, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm putting words in your mouth, so why don't I just let you speak? Sorry. Uh, no, it, it's like uh, I completely agree. Like in terms of the nature of the project is like people that are driven by passion are willing to do things. And uh, that's why we're all here, and that's why people will be open warm in the future. So it is surely the first requirement is that each one of us will be doing something that is interesting. Now, another thing that we also need to take into account is that uh, potentially, if we all go le like, uh, even in the context of the C elegance if we all go in different directions, in the end, we'll have something which might be a tiny little pieces of potentially very good software that on, on their own are potentially doing interesting things, but we will never come up with anything which is a concert. It's like you will hear a drum solo, a guitar solo, but we'll never come up with a song. Right. So, at some stage, if we want to play a song, we also need to see, I think, each one of us, how our interests could contribute to the song. Like, I want to play guitar because that's what I'm good at, but let's figure out how to play guitar in the context of making the song. Otherwise, uh, I, I'm afraid that we'll be drifting off uh, and we would lack of um, kind of uh, not only focus but also uh, a, a common vision where we really want to go. So obviously the first thing to define then, which is uh, why we started this conversation as well, is what is the objective that as a project we want to achieve. We all say, uh, the way I see this working is we all say what the project what we should have, let's say, in six months' time, in a year time, like we said, when we started this project, and then we see how each one of us can contribute in order to get there. Because, like, uh, I could be very passionate about uh, driving uh, a flash front end because I, I, I'm very passionate about flash and blah, blah, blah. But then, if, I mean, in the end, that could take out from the project more than adding if it's not in the context of we need a flash front end. So you know what I'm saying? I think we all need to kind of first uh, state what our interests are, but we already kind of know that. But then we need to place this interest in the context of actually building the building a product, something that goes into one direction. Although it's the difference between uh, 
um, like heat and current, like uh, all the electrons going in the same direction or the electrons just moving around. Okay, so if we want to heat up, then let's keep doing what we're doing. If we want to get somewhere, let's agree on where we want to go, let's say how each one of us can contribute to go into that direction, and then we will get somewhere. Nice physics analogy there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I agree, obviously, that we should be all moving in the same direction. But say, um, so in my case, for instance, okay, I've got a, mo a model of a muscle cell and neuron. Um, there is no, if, if we had a, another simulator for the project, I would use that. As far as I'm concerned, the hard part of making a model is getting all the mathematics right, getting all the mechanisms right, all the parameters right. Once a sim simulator exists, I mean, no, that's 95% of the work. Once a simulator exists, translating a model like that in, into a form which can be used by the simulator would be pretty easy. And as far as um, connecting, say, my model to the S uh, SPH solver, uh, sure, I agree, obviously, it, it needs to be done within a framework. But as the framework doesn't exist, it would be good to prove the principle. And once the framework does exist, we then, uh, then I'd be more than happy to work on rewriting the model within that framework. Uh, so, uh, well, we're uh, drifting a bit from the simplified versus accurate. Uh, but, uh, for instance, to answer, Mike, we have, uh, we do have uh, an SPH solver written for that is integrated with the simulation engine. Uh, the work is not finished, uh, but like uh, that's where we were going before this release was finished, right? And the next day it was to make it more, gener more generic so that it could basically simulate uh, an arbitrarily defined uh, uh, SPH particle system. So that's where we ha were before the release. Now, if we were, and we were we already started the discussion with Stephen in terms of how to integrate the neuronal simulation with the physical one. And we were going to do that into that context. So uh, one of the areas that, uh, uh, again, if we forget the simplified versus accurate uh, division, one of the areas we were going to focus uh, on was integration. And I think in such area there would be room for what you're saying, Mike, in terms of uh, figuring out how to, and keeping it at a theoretical level to begin with, figuring out how to integrate the two things, and then uh, uh, we, w we would have been moving from there, instead of uh, uh, like uh, yourself just going and trying to integrate the thing. It would be, uh, what I'm suggesting is that it might be more proficient uh, to do that, uh, again, within the framework that we were and we currently still are developing. So, so here. Uh, no, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I was wrapping up. Go ahead. OK. So I mean, I guess what I propose here, just so that we can, we can move past this, um, we can move past this particular conversation, is that um, you know, Mike needs to do what Mike needs to do. So if there is, um, if this integration um, that we've been working on can be um, brought up to speed, um, in time um, for it, for his use um, to do what he wants to do within the context of the simulation engine, then that would be awesome. And and I think we'd ask Mike to try to you know set up um, an instance of the the engine as it stands today and to have a look at it to see if he can if he could potentially integrate with it. Um, there are some technical challenges, of course, that I can think of already. Um, Java versus Python being one of them. Um, and you know complexity of build um, and drivers being a second, but um, if we set that aside for the moment, I think it, it might be worth at least a little bit of time for Mike to see if he can be if he can be effective. But if this week he downloads that and um, he can't make as much progress as he can with his current system, then I think that he has two choices: he can either do nothing, which means that he's not contributing to the project, or he can. Um, he can try to build another bridge in a way that he that he um, knows how to do, um, or you know could you know could learn how to do. So my suggestion is that we don't answer this question once and for all for everything in terms of 
whether to work within the framework or outside of the framework. I think we all generally agree that we want to work within a framework as much as we can, but there's some practical concerns. But that we progress on this specific on this specific thing, just practically and linearly, and um, that we open the conversation, that, that we point Mike to all the resources we have to give him about um, about the engine as it stands today, and um, and then proceed from there. Um, yeah, I, I, I just I just want to <laughs> clarify one thing. Like, uh, I think there is plenty of room uh, to start experimenting uh, with uh, if he's already using if Mike you're already using Neuron uh, or if he is familiar with Python. I uh, what I was suggesting is not that uh, basically to remove this flexibility, which is also our power. The fact that each one of us uh, is the uh, more proficient in its own environment and blah blah blah. It's just that we coordinate these single efforts so that uh, basically we can start off with Python. We might we know what we're doing and uh, we kind of plan down a roadmap of how these will then get integrated uh, with everything else. Uh, so it, uh, all I'm suggesting is that we keep coordination in between us instead of just you know, spinning out of control, uh, and I'm not saying, Mike, that you're spinning out of control because uh, you're volunteering and saying, this is what I would like to do, and uh, it's not even particular to you because now it was your turn, uh, next turn it will be someone else, oh, I would like to do this, I would like to do that, and all I'm suggesting is uh, l let's keep thinking of uh, how we can uh, coordinate and synchronize what each one of us wants to contribute in a way that in the end we'll have a song instead of just many riffs and so So, I have, I have my model um, on, on GitHub right now, on the open worm, I've just put it up there. We should uh, look at getting my, my model to, to work with the, with the uh, current framework, with the simulator, I'd be more than happy to do that. Great. I'll facilitate that conversation um, so that we can we can move forward. I think, I, and it would be a good test case also. I think that's great. And yeah, we can compare how the neur how the neuron compares to the simulator, all sorts of things. It would just be a very good way way to do. So yeah, if if that's, if I'd be more than happy to do that, hundred percent. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not. I don't think that our simulator is ready to simulate the muscle cell. So the way that I'm looking at it at the moment is that whatever you need to use. If your interest is to do the integration, and I'm, I'm gonna tie, I'm gonna link back to what he was saying as well. So it's kind of a summary, and hopefully everyone is gonna be happy <laughs> after what I say. Is if Mike, in, and that's an example. It could be me. It could be someone else who's working on something else. So if Mike, in this case, says I'm, I want to work on this, Matteo is saying, how does that? Uh, tie in the bigger picture. And I think in this case it, it, it does fit. When he integrates whatever model of the muscle cell he has with the SPH or whatever other physics, when he does that, he's going to have to figure it out. I mean, he's going to have to figure out how to do that directly before he does it. So, and, and whatever he does is going to be proof that the theoretical thing works. So when we go and do it on our on on that basically background for us to, to build on. Because basically that particular work has been done, it's been figured out. It, it's like the SPH you can see like Andre did. Andre yeah. first wrote the SPH. So uh, I don't see an, an issue with this particular point. So I, I don't think the people are, are saying uh, we shouldn't do we should do. They're just saying in, in this particular example is a particularly good example because it actually fits the bigger picture. That integration work that Mike is, is saying that he's interested in doing is actually something that we were already thinking of. So yes. you will be doing something that we wanted to do. So it's even better, in my, in my opinion. I think it fits. The, the, the one thing that, uh, going back to the meeting minutes, Stephen, is like we were trying to see if simplified versus accurate. I think that uh, uh, from what he's saying, might be more to, to the accurate since such yeah. integration is not something that we were planning to do 
surely for the simplified version, otherwise it wouldn't be simple at all. So it's like uh, we need to see who is interested. It basically, go in. It's like the MVP focusing on uh, focusing on a simplified world is basically focusing on putting together first of all a framework that can be used. To basically whatever we're simulating, whether that is a neural simulation or a physical simulation, and having uh, something that closes the loop. So uh, see, focusing on the simplified is probably focusing on an en engineering because you want to build something that works, uh, and once you have that something, then Mike won't have to use neuron. Once you have something. Mike won't have to use neuron because Mike will be in a position to contribute to a simulator that uh, works within a framework that we built for the simplified world. So we need to see who wants, who basically, who thinks that uh, going the, on the engineering way in terms of uh, building uh, first a whole skeleton to potentially host any kind of simulation. We need to figure out who's interested in this and if we think as, as a group that this is a good approach or a good idea. I, I, I think it's a good idea. I think it's not inside my area of expertise. I think what I'm probably best suited to do is work on the accurate model just because that's, that's what I do all day is work on accurate, biologically accurate models. Very good. Okay, I think uh, we got a game plan, and I've actually been sending around some emails here to coordinate uh, this effort. So um, I think we can take some of these things offline um, for the next uh, for the next one. So I think uh, several of you have emails. Um, so um, we've got about eight minutes left until I have to run. Um, sorry about the abbreviated meeting again. Um, I will set I will set a regular calendar invite, recurring every two weeks in this general time, but for, for a couple hours um, after this, if that's, if that's okay, and, and this folks can't make it, that's fine. But, um, um, but anyway, I, I wanted to just kind of get down this question of simplified versus accurate. So, um, so Matteo and Giovanni, you guys are kind of driving this perspective that simplified can involve the, the current simulation engine. So I guess I wonder if, um, if it makes sense for us to write up kind of what a s what a roadmap of things that you guys want to want to where you want to take the simulation engine in the next six months that incorporates the simplified view, where we can get down to a few more specifics in terms of like okay, if it's going to be as a cabbage neurons, then you know we're going to do we're going to do that we're going to do that part, or if it's just going to be like integrating fire neurons, then okay we're going to we're going to do that part, but like. If you guys can carve out what you think the simplified path through the larger vision um, looks yeah. like in, in more detail, and we can have a look at and see, like, you know, what can we do actually in six months along that route? Um, okay. Part of it involves uh, getting acquainted with uh, Andre's and Sergey's work a bit more. Uh, yeah. But no, obviously not from the infrastructure point of view, but more about w what are we actually going to use it for. Okay. For first, uh, like working sample. Uh, so yeah, I, I I think that's we're gonna have to do that. You mean getting more familiar with the cyber elegance code base? No, no, we're gonna have to, to, to basically lay out an outline of what we think needs to be done and what we think we can actually do with the resources we have in the next six months. And part of that effort needs to be uh, basically getting acquainted with, with the actual existing code. With the, with the existing cyber elegance code, you mean? Yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, You have some points using code and all that. So all that you, you can ask for only after you look at it. And uh, the other thing is, uh, if, if it's not reused, my, my idea was to use that as a spec. Like, we're going to redo that in the, in the, um, in the. Oh, no. We lost them both. Uh, oh, hang out. Um, okay. Can anyone still hear me? 
Uh, I can hear you, Mike, although your video is frozen. Yeah, I thought so. Um, okay, well, maybe this is a good time in the last five minutes then to ask Sergey. Sergey, have you had a chance to look at the uh, at that Synapse database at all? Make make any sense of it? That's another thing that we did. Uh, is that we met um, we met last week? Yeah, I didn't actually add that to the update, but um, yeah. So I, I met with um, met with Steve Cook and Sergey to talk about the um, the database structure. So we basically fa we figured out. So this guy Steve Cook has this database of the Synapse positions, <coughs> and we figured out how his database structure describes the positions of synapses, and we started to connect them to, um, we, we started to figure out a game plan for connecting those synapse positions into the NeuroML model. We started to talk about this, I think, at the last meeting. But now we actually know a bit more about the, the database structure. So yeah, so Sergey, any, any updates on that? Have you had a chance to, to look more into that? Or how's that going? Uh, I'm trying to work with this. Uh, I created first uh, a test project, uh, load data from DB and so on. Okay. But uh, nothing more. Okay. Well, test project is awesome. Uh, test project is is cool. So we have a MySQL dump there, working working um, for that stuff. So. Um, I'm sure it's slow going, so uh, so no no worries. But um, let me know if you need any help. Um, if you want if you want to set up another time to kind of go through it and um, and look at it and kind of flesh out the game plan, um, I'm happy to I'm happy to sit with you and, uh, and and talk about it more. Maybe maybe sometime next week. Would that okay? Do that? Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'll set that up too. Gentlemen, you left us right in in. In the middle of your your great insight, we lost you. I'm the only one who had it, but Joe was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made my point anyway. I was just digressing. I think. Okay. So while you were while you were gone, we talked a little bit about synapses. I forgot to update you guys that last week we also met with uh, with a synapse position guy and Sergey, and we we looked through his database to figure out the structure cool. of it. Um, so we're going to be moving that stuff forward too. Um, and I still owe I still owe him some configuration of this uh, cat made system on a on an on an EC2 instance. So if anybody wants to play with that with me too, uh, let me know. But um, okay, so I think we've got a basic game plan. So Andre sounds like he's um, wrapping up some things um, in his lab, but is going to start to free up in the next few weeks. But is 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 looking to sort of wrap through the, the SPH. Uh, there's going to be a conversation between Mike and Andre a little bit about how to integrate directly. Then I think we're going to have this conversation about how to integrate uh, in a more uh, architecturally friendly way. Um, so we'll sort of have both conversations. Um, I think that probably one is a good way to proceed. What? Sorry, Stephen. One thing I, I, would, like, I would like to ask uh, Andre is, uh, Andre, is SPH uh, uh, Build a viable uh, solution for simulating the physical of the worm. I remember last time you were saying something like uh, it could get very complex. It is working, but there are some problems. So I am not sure I fully understand uh, uh, like how comfortable you're feeling with SPH as the engine for the physical simulation of the worm. Okay. Mm. There was some small uh, noise in the message, but I think that uh, I heard uh, almost everything, that, so I can uh, adequately uh, answer. Mm. That complexity and uh, problems which I described uh, they were about um, that. Uh, Version which we with which we started to work at the beginning uh, when we um, so it was uh, the in initial version um, uh, done on uh, with OpenCL um, and first it was um, with DirectX uh, we. Uh, Removed it and um, replaced it with uh, OpenGL, 
and so on. So, um, there were some um, inconveniences like this uh, also in SPH code. Uh, and now after my modifications, um, so I'm um, finishing to replace um, pieces of code which seem to me some kind of not very suitable for our purposes. Uh, one of them still contains a bug which results in that um, density uh, fluctuations. Mm. So I know all what steps I need to complete. Uh, they are all um, well, able to do. And when I will finish it, uh, at least SPH will work uh, correctly and uh, almost uh, transparently for understanding. Uh, okay. It will be quite simple, simple organization, and uh, it will be ready for further um, modifications. Um, with elastic matter, it was also implem uh, al already implemented uh, in single CPU version, as we remember. Uh, so yeah. I will need only to add uh, to adopt okay. this code for OpenSail. Okay. It's not big. And this will be initial base for uh, building something uh, from this uh, components, liquid and elastic. Okay, so and just, uh, just and a, okay, a, a geometric oh, okay, plan. Sorry, sorry, I wasn't. Uh, it, it's not completely in sync, so I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry, uh, I, I was <laughs> just saying. Uh, and again, we can probably update uh, the what you wrote uh, for the simulation engine in terms of uh, SPH to bring in all of these modifications that you're doing on your code base, right? Uh, I think so. Good. When, it, when it, will, um. it will be finished, uh, when uh, we with Andre created the last version which, which will be work correctly I I'll do that. Good. Thanks. Okay. Um, so sounds reasonable. Um, again, sorry about the compressed uh, timeline for this. So um, for my part, I'll keep driving forward uh, several, several of these initiatives and, um, and coordinating um, between them so to facilitate these conversations. Um, I'm going to try to do some work on setting up this, this uh, Synapse instance of CatMade for general consumption over the next uh, the next couple weeks and uh, set down a meeting for this time in, in two weeks. Um, as always, uh, please let me know if you have any, any questions or concerns. Uh, happy to address them. Okay? Yes. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks very much. Great to see you. Have a great day nice. and slash night for nice. those of you in Russia. See you. Bye. 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 Thanks.